So next up is definitely the wine that I am always most excited about. It's a vineyard that I walk every day with my dog. It's our, you know, it's the vineyard we understand most about. It's, you know, about the limestone as well as the good slope on the hill block. It's all about it. I mean, we just, we just love our home vineyard. That's what this is, the Navaya 2009 um, you know, just a really exciting wine. What makes it even more exciting this year is we found since 2007 really one of the most shining varieties for us out in Navaya has been Syrah. But uh, 2007 and 2008, I mean, they were still a little bit uh, too immature to make their way into the Navaya bottling. Uh, we didn't have enough crop and we wanted to release something with that was 100% Syrah. So that's our Bossa Nova or our Syrah from 2007. Um, but 2009, we finally got a yield that was you know, decent enough that somebody could make its way in here. Um, we've started to pull away from a lot of the later ripening varieties, particularly in 2009. So there's no Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc in this particular blend. And we're really trying to focus on those that we can get just great ripeness on, like Syrah and Merlot. So this is 60% Merlot and 40% Syrah. Um, the Merlot comes from that hill block, so there's a little bit more limestone content, so we get that minerality and it maintains some of that freshness. Very, very windy side. The Syrah currently is on the roadblock, which is the hottest spot, <clears throat> um, and it's really just found a great home there. We're just getting you know, huge fruit, but still maintaining that classic Syrah, meaty, smoky, almost like bacon-like notes to it. And everything's better with bacon, right? So, you know. Got to have it in line with Syrah. Um, you know, it sounds kind of awkward, but really, I mean, it, it is a hallmark of Syrah or a tr you know, trademark characteristic of Syrah that we think is very exciting and that I personally love it. Um, we've also planted a lot more Syrah over the past couple of years, understanding that how well it's working. Um, we're doing a big transition within our vineyard, pulling out the varieties that we don't think were shining, like, say, Pinot Noir or Pinot Gris, and putting a lot of focus in on the varieties that are really working well. So Viognier and Syrah are getting a lot more planting. We're also putting some Petit Mansang in there to help hold everything together with its acidity. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's never a dull moment here at Tarara, never a dull moment out in our vineyard in Navaya. So. Um, like any of our uh, single vineyard wines, indigenous yeast fermentation, this uh, you know, long, hot um, time was good. I mean, the fermentation itself only took about 10 days, but uh, it had for the Merlot, it was eight days, for the Syrah, nine days cold soap prior, and both of them were on the skins just up over 30 days before we pressed them, trying to get that great extraction and really get everything out of it that we could. Um, with our reds, we use what's called a pulse hair. So you hear about people doing um, pump overs or punch downs and this other. We have this pulse hair. It's ultimately a, a wand that we stick in the wine that blows bubbles and blows up the cap to kind of mix it up. And we'll do that three times a day uh, once the fermentation is rolling. So trying to get a lot of um, extraction from mixing up that tank a lot, but doing it very gently and leaving a lot of the seeds at the bottom so we're not getting those bitter tones. So, <clears throat> on the nose, this is exactly what I look for in the environment. In the environment, it's got that floral uh, meets ripe fruit elements of the Merlot on our hill block. Um, and then the, the Syrah just comes through, it has violets, meets you know, this meaty characteristic meets plum fruit, dark and black fruit. It, it's really kind of exciting, but it is still so youthful and tight at the same time. I mean, this is a baby wine. On the palate, you get that smokiness. You get that plum character. You get those floral elements from both the Shrya and the Merlot. Lots of ripe fruit. But it also showcases the vintage very well. You still have that bright acidity that is classic of 2009. It has, you know, the power and the ripeness of the fruit meets that elegance. It's really kind of a neat one for that. It's all about balance. 
Um, and this has, this has great balance. It has richness in all levels. Um, I think the study wine, the tannins are incredibly youthful. Um, they have a velvety texture to them, but they are mouth filling. Uh, I do suggest that this wine should sit down in a cellar for a few more years at least. I would say four or five years minimum, but it could hold for a little while longer than that as well, just to let those tannins and the acidity integrate a little bit more. It's amazing though with this wine, it's aged 100% in new Virginia oak, but I just don't get oak from it at all. I mean, it's all fruit, all smoke. All, I mean, but it's, it's, when I say smoke, it's not barrel smoke. It's that Syrah classic smoky bacon type characteristic to it. Um, the barrel is very understated, which is cool, very cool. It's all about what's in this bottle here. Um, then like all the wines, we had 18 months in the barrel, um, bottled on fine and unfiltered, and brought to you like this. So uh, already sold out. So if you do have some of this, I mean, you can open it tonight and sip with me. Um, or you can hold on to this for a little while longer. We won't be able to get you any more of this. Unfortunately, you guys as our wine club members, we love you, but you bought it all up in the first couple of hours at your release party. So, salute.